From Bobcat Stadium in Grandview Heights, Ohio, it's the regular season finale between the Mifflin Punchers and the Grandview Heights Bobcats. Hi everybody, Murphy Horning here. Oh, I'm your play-by-play -play guy. I'll be flying solo tonight, although John Iono, he's about six feet from me. He'll be doing the PA tonight, so there should be some banter going on back and forth in the booth here. But the Bobcats come into this game off a thrilling 35-34 to overtime win against Lucasville Valley last week, putting the Bobcats in good position to host a home playoff game. Mifflin comes into this game with a record of 2-7. and seven. They beat Lyndon McKinley 14 to six last week. That was their second win of the year. Grammy's record is six and three. So, 16 teams get in the playoffs per region as the Bobcats take the field wearing their white jerseys as Braddock Lusher runs through the senior night sign. So Grandview enters this game with a record of six and three. They are ninth in region 23. The top eight teams get a home game in within the region. So Bobcats have clinched a playoff spot, so that's big. But if Grammy wins tonight, according to Drew Pasteur's Fantastic 50, his his mathematical projections, if the Bobcats win tonight, currently as the ninth seed, they have an 84% chance to host a first round playoff game. The seven and eight seeds are East Knox and Nelsonville, York. East Knox, their record is six and three, but they play nine and zero oh Danville tonight. So, Grandview comes into this thinking that they should get a break with East Knox go going to play Danville. And the seventh seed is Nelsonville, York. They're seven and two. They play five and four Athens, but Athens is in Division three, so that looks like another potential get for the Bobcats. And you'll notice Grandview's wearing the, the road white jerseys tonight. This was originally scheduled to be a home game for Mifflin, but because of press box issues at their stadium, the two agreed to switch sites. So Grandview's in their in their road white jerseys. They are technically the home team tonight. This this is not a technical road game for Grandview that's being played at home. This is a home game for the Bobcats. But Mifflin, they are wearing their charcoal jerseys with the charcoal letters and numbers, white trimmed, and the silver helmets. But the punchers, they wanted to wear their their dark home jerseys tonight. The Bobcats agreed and the officials agreed, so that's why we have a flipped uniform matchup tonight. Well, yesterday was a perfect night for football. It was cloudless, temperature was in the 60s, very comfortable. Not quite the same tonight. It's very overcast, some light rain is falling, temperature is in the 50s. It'll be cold by the end of the night. A lot of fans bundled up. Some have ponchos. Almost all the crowd has bundled up. They brought their coats to the game. Looks like a pretty sparse crowd here at senior night. Some student presence. Looks like the weather has kept at least a few fans away. You don't see a ton of fans trickling in, so looks like it's mostly just the diehards that are here tonight. In case you're wondering, at the concessions night, it's walking apple pie and bratwurst tonight, according to John Iono. As he has, he already, I think last week he cut an NIL deal with the Bobcats with the Grandview Band parents to give him free food before the games. So we are, cats are set to go here. The punchers trotting out onto the field. Let's go, White! So Dante Lanier. The man standing at the 10 for Mifflin to return. Ryan Livingston Sanders kicking from left to right for the Bobcats. He runs up in the ball, sends an end over end, middle of the field, and far side, and it goes out of bounds. And the ball will go up to the 30-yard line. So good field position for the punchers to start today's game. The ball will go out to the 35. 
Hoffman. They will take start off this possession at their own 35 yard line. So three in the backfield for Mifflin. They send two guys onto the field. Looks like their coaches were just getting up to the press box. And here we go. First play from scrimmage tonight for the punchers. And play action. Here's quarterback draw. He's up to the 40. Is Michael Woodward the quarterback? Tackles made. Tackle made by Braddock Lusher and Gary Chafin Waltz. So that's a five yard gain. That's second and five. So Woodward in the pistol, one man to his right. The tail back behind him. So here's a handoff left side. And he is stood up at the 42. I don't see a number four on my roster either. They changed you. So they must have changed uniforms. That was number four who had the carry. I don't see a number four listed on my numerical roster. Pick up two yards. <laughs> so third down and four. Mifflin at their own 46. Here's Woodward rolling to his right. Stark reverses his field. He's in trouble and he is sacked at the 32. Gary Chafin waltz the sack for the Bobcats. That's a second tackle in three plays. And the punchers will punt it away. Michael Woodward to punt it. It's a shoulder high snap. Cats coming after it. And they almost got there. That was Jet Stanley almost caught it. Nugent bobbles the punt and ought to slide on at the 18. Randy will start this possession, and Lamont looks like they will start at the 20-yard line. They're on the 20-yard line, first attempt. So they rule him down at the 20, so that's the Cats starting field position the first time tonight. So Clifford in the shotgun. Four receivers to the right, and a flag flies, and Mifflin jumped. So that's and offsides on Mifflin. On that will be offsides against Mifflin. So it'll be first and five for Brandon. So that was about the spot of the muff where Nugent muffed it. So it's now first down and five. Cats have four receivers to the right and none to the left. First time I've seen this formation. Clifford, a pitch to Olinger. Olinger has the corner, has the first down, 35. He's the 40, still on his feet. and He's pushed out of bounds at the 42. That was Ray King Hill who pushed... Bowling are out of bounds. That's an 18-yard carry. And the Cats have it first to 10 at their own 43. We'll see if this is a more leisurely pace than last week's game. Last week's game didn't end until 10-20 about. Most games end around roughly 9-15, 9-30. So two receivers to the left, one wide to the right. Say catch the motion man, and a flag flies. 
And it's offsides again on Mifflin. So it's going to be five yards on that penalty. It'll be repeat first down, first and five for Grandview from their own 48-yard line. So first and five, Bobcats, their own 48. They catch the motion. And here's Nugent. He is gobbled up in the backfield. That's Michael Woodward, the tackle. So then Clifford's handoff to Nugent. And down in the it's a three-yard loss at second and eight for the Bobcats, their own 45. Come on, White! Hey, everything was on time. We started exactly. Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Second and eight, Cats their own 45. Nine minutes left in the first quarter. We are scoreless. And here's a pitch to the left side. Ball's loose. And it's fumbled around. Who's got it? No, they rule it incomplete. One of the side officials is ruling it an incomplete pass. Now the, the far side official is calling it a fumble. I thought I saw the official on the near side calling it an incomplete pass. Oh, it looks like that's what they ruled. That is an incomplete pass. So, Randy will be... So, one official, official said one thing on the near side. The far side officials seem to say another thing. But they did rule that that pitch was a forward pass. That was Charlotte Tucker, who's the intended recipient there. But now it looks like they moved a half yard back of the original line of scrimmage. Oh, now they're back up to the correct line of scrimmage. Third down and eight, cats at their own 45. Clifford to pass. He's pressured, escapes, doesn't escape the second time as he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. That was Raking Hill, the tackle. He'll be credited with a sack, a one yard loss. And the Cats will punt it away. And Dante Lanier will return for the punchers. As that's an end over end short kick. It bounces, takes a Bobcat roll, and it'll go to the 19. So that was Beckett Joe Bear who downed it for the Bobcats. And so the punchers, after going three and out in the first drive, will start the second drive at their own 19 with 8.07 remaining in the first quarter of a scoreless game. And we'd like to remind you that this presentation of Bobcats football on YouTube is brought to you by Nikki Evans with Coldwell Banker, Nationwide Children's Hospital, Naughty Pine Brewing Company, Lion Cub Cookies, and Duncan. So it's first and ten, punchers at their own 19-yard line. Woodward in the shotgun, flanked by two men each direction. And here's a handoff. He's running right 20, and he is down to the 22. It's Henry Olinger credited with the tackle. It's now second and seven for the punchers. So that's three yards on the carry. And second and seven, Mifflin at their own 22. So Woodward in the gun, two in the backfield, flanked in each direction. Two receivers to the left, one wide to the right. And Woodward's back to throw. Now he starts up the middle, slips through, gets a first down, and he skirts out of bounds. At the 31 yard line. So that's a so nine yard Michael quarterback Lewis scamper. It. And it's first and, and 10, Mifflin at their own 31. It's Henry Olinger, again, who pushed him out of bounds. First and 10, punchers of their own 31. 7.23 remaining in the first quarter. Scoreless game. 
Cats 6 and 3, Mifflin 2 and 7. Grandview likely gets a home playoff game if they pull it off today. Play action. Woodward rolling to his right, looking across the field, throws incomplete. He was looking there for Jazeel Phillips, but a flag is down. It was thrown middle of the pass, so we'll check the flag here. Good job, sir. There you go. It's a hold on Mifflin. So that's a 10 yard penalty. Appears the Bobcats will accept it. It'll make it first and 20 for the punchers at their own 21. So they wind the clock here. I think they probably just run it because of the holding penalty negated the incomplete pass. A little surprised they're running the clock. Here's Woodward. Woodward fakes a handoff. He runs to the 25, and Saycash gets him near the 30. So a lot of quarterback keepers for Michael Woodward so far. He gets nine there. Gets close to the original line of scrimmage. It's second and 11. So it's second down and 11. Again, two in the backfield for Mifflin. Three receivers wide, long side to the right, one short to the left. And here's a counter. Here he goes. He's tripped up, and he dives up to the 37. So that's a five-yard gain. It's third down and five. For Mifflin at their own 36. Grammy crowd pretty quiet tonight. <laughs> Quite a rambunctious bunch last week and we're for most of the game. <laughs> but pretty docile so far. Here's a handoff up the middle. He slips through the first couple tackles but doesn't get through enough as he's brought down shy of the 40-yard line, at least two yards short of the first down. Number four, brought down by Danny Main. Danny Main, the tackle. And it's fourth and two, and Mifflin sends out the punt team. It's Michael Woodward to punt it away. Owen Nugent to return for the Bobcats. Student section chanting defense. I guess they're anticipating a fake. So shoulder high snap. Sends a kick. Nugent fair catches at the 30. I thought he could have ran that there. <laughs> and there were a couple punchers flying towards him, but if he got an initial burst of speed, he could have gotten quite a few yards there. Folks, reminder that we like to thank our athletic partners. And now John Iono is giving our broadcast sponsors some love over the PA system. <laughs> and for those who are wondering, negotiations have stalled in me and John's NIL talks with Granddad's Pizza and The Avenue. They, they might have to hold off until next year when we make our return trip to Scioto County to watch the Cats face Lucasville Valley. We'll need someone to pay our gas expenses. <laughs> Here's a handout to Olinger. Olinger to the 35, dies up close to the first down. Looks like he's just short, but a good carry on first and 10. So Olinger gets enough speed right away that he's able to run through some of the tackles there. So it's second down and and about a quarter of a yard, if that, for the Bobcats. Three receivers to the right. Olinger in the backfield. It's Olinger cutting it back, getting the first down. Still fighting, still fighting. 
And he gets up to the 45. Good push by Olinger. So give him six. And it's first to ten cats of their own 45. It's Abda Kadir Bashir credited with the tackle. 340 remaining in the first quarter. Scoreless game. Cats first to 10 at their own 45. One receiver long side to the left, three short side to the right. And the jet sweep to Nugent. Nugent in trouble, and he is tackled for a loss. So the Cats try to go with the counter jet sweep there, but Mifflin read it well. And that's Raking Hill with the tackle. He's been their busiest defensive player so far. It's a two-yard loss, and it's second down and 12. Cats at their own 43. So four receivers for the Bobcats, three of them to the right. Olinger in the backfield with Clifford. Clifford to pass. Swings it right side. It's a low throw incomplete. He's throwing towards, Gain, for, towards James Gusty, the junior. He thought he was going to have some room there, but he did not. And might not be a bad thing if they didn't catch that because he probably would have been tackled for a three-yard loss. And it's third and 12. Third and 12. Clifford back to throw. Looks, throws over the middle, looking for Nugent. It's caught. He turns up field to the 10. Touchdown, Bobcats. No flags. And a catch strike first. They lead 6 0. Jack Clifford, 57 yards to Owen Nugent. And Grandview leads Mifflin 6 0. The kick is up, and it is good. As Ryan Livingston Sanders knocks down the extra point, and Granby leads 7 0. We'll take a quick break here with the Bobcats leading the Punchers 7 0. You're watching Granby Football on YouTube. Ryan Livingston Sanders kickoff for the Bobcats. 2.32 remaining in the first frame. Cats leading Mifflin 7 0. There's an end over end kick, and it's over the head of Lanier. Lanier picks it up at his eight. He runs up the middle, runs into his own man. He's in trouble, and Nugent will tackle him at the 13. Well, the punchers will be backed up here. <laughs> there could have been a face mask called. Officials may have missed that there, so cats get a break. 
the guy, you know. Let's go, White! As some rain beginning to fall here. Looks pretty steady. Hasn't been raining hard enough to be a factor. It's been intermittent light showers. Play action. Woodward in, under tr in trouble. Runs and he's tackled at the 10. That's Cooper Bauer. The tackle for a loss. Woodward has shown the ability to maneuver out of the pocket, but there are just too many guys there for the Bobcats. He had no blockers in front of him. Uh, it's a three-yard loss, and it's second down and 10. Second down and 13 at the 10. Here's a handoff middle. And that's Daniel Main making a tackle for the Bobcats. That was the unidentified number two with the hand with the carry for the punchers. This is Jet Stanley was also there for Grandview. So that's a two yard gain. It's third and eleven. Punchers at their own twelve. Woodward running left. Woodward to the 15, to the 20. He's going to be close to a first down. A flag flies. They rule him just short. But there is a flag down. This looks like it's in the area of holding. And it is, in fact, holding on Mifflin. I'd take this penalty if I were Grandview. It is fourth down, but just inches shy of the marker. And Grandview, I definitely think they should take this. Looks like Peters, Jason Peters is still figuring out what he wants to do here. Now he's at most a half yard shy of the first down. And the Bobcats will accept it. So with that, it'll be a third down, and it will take the punchers back to their nine and a half yards. So that this makes it third down and fourteen. Punchers at their own nine. It's furthest they've been backed up on this drive. Forty seconds left in the first quarter. Cats on top, seven to nothing. Play action, Woodward in his own end zone, escapes, rolling to his right, looks across the field, stops, sidearm pass, tip, intercepted by the Bobcats. That was Kyle Kukura. Oh, there's a flag down. This, this interception might be coming back. That might be a hit on the quarterback, so everybody hang on here. So both teams are, Cats defense is still on the field. Mifflin's, still, Mifflin's in the huddle. And it's a targeting call on the Bobcats. That's a targeting call going against oh, come on! I didn't see the hit, so I couldn't tell if it was a good call or not, but Brad Bertani, the AD, is sitting right next to me. He's, he said he saw a hit on the quarterback, so... Do they go to? Do they review this? 
Yeah. There is no ejection for this in high school. No replay review. Maybe it's 15. I mean, the line of scrimmage was the 9. They have it spotted at the 22. So now it's, it's a 13-yard penalty. It's third down and one. Mifflin, their own 22 after the target. Again, it's not like college. No automatic ejection. No replay. So it's third and one. Not an automatic first down. There's handoff to the fullback, and he gets the first down at the 25. So, was, so Lusher and Gary Chafin Waltz make the play for the Bobcats, but not before the unidentified number two gets the first down. There's just seven seconds left in the first quarter. The punchers appear content to let it run into the second, and we'll take it into the second. With the Bobcats leading Mifflin 7 0. You're watching Bobcats football on YouTube. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the first quarter comes to an end. We got a couple minutes here to run the concession stand, get some uh, hot food in you, hot drink. And come back and throw the second quarter. At the end of one, then you Start of the second quarter, Grandview leads 7-0. The one score was a 57-yard touchdown pass from Jack Clifford to Owen Nugent. And Mifflin starts the second frame, first and 10 at their own 25. Woodward, the handoff up the middle. He has a burst of speed, gets a first down, still going, and he's down past the 45. So Kyle Kakura and Aiden Dowdy with a tackle. Kakura had the interception that was negated because of the targeting penalty. So it's first and ten punchers at their own 45 and a half yard line. Here's a handoff to number four. Doesn't have much room up the middle there. Might have gotten two. And second down. It's Gary Chafin Wolves with the tackle. So it's a two and a half yard gain, and it's second down and seven plus, let's call it that. There's four up the middle. Cats looked like they had a shot at him right when he had when he got the handoff because it looked like there was a bit of a little bit of hesitation on that, but he was able to. There was enough. There was enough initial blocking that he was able to get past the line of scrimmage. So it's third down and five at the 49 and a half. Let's go, Dee! 
and a whistle. And Mifflin calls a timeout. So, ladies and gentlemen, those apple pies are now officially about gone. There may be one or two left. So, if you want to try a walking apple pie, get to the concession stand now. No promise that they'll be there. But they do have pies. So, good sauerkraut and brown mustard. Spicy. So, again, get if you're at the stadium or you're making your way towards the stadium. They have bratwurst with sauerkraut and brown mustard. They're down in five. Shy of the 49. Woodward runs up the middle, gets a first down, he's still going. And he lowers the head and trucks Will Sanzo inside the 30. And it's first and 10 for Mifflin. So that's a 20 yard gain. And it's first and 10, punchers at the Bobcats, 29. It's a low snap, Woodward bounces to the left, now up the middle, and he's tackled the 32, a flag flies in. And it's a hold on Mifflin. So it's a hold on the punchers. It's either second and 13 or first and 20. Cats will take the 10 yards, and it's first and 20. Mifflin at the Grandview 39, 9.39. Left in the second quarter, Cats on top, 7-0. Here's a handoff up the middle, not much room. He does get some push, but still brought down the 35. That makes it second and 16. That was Braddock Lusher and Kyle Kakura making the play for the Bobcats. And it's second and long. So accepting that penalty, it nets the Bobcats three yards. Would have been second and 13 if they accept it, if they declined it. But since they accepted it, it's now second and 16, so it ends up working just fine for the Bobcats. Second and 16 at the 35. Woodward rolling to his left, looking, pumps, stops, runs up the middle 30, breaks a tackle 25, gets past another man, and he gets the first down. Braddock Lusher with the play for Grandview, but again, great downfield vision by the quarterback, Michael Woodward. First down and 10 Bobcats, or, or punchers at the Bobcats 18 yard line. 8.08 to go in the second quarter. Two in the backfield for Mifflin. Here's a handoff to the tailback. He's up past the 15, still fighting, and he's down near the 10. So that's an eight yard gain at second and two. Jake Sakash the tackle. Ben Matney also credited. 
Second down and two, punchers at the Bobcats 10 yard line. It's a low snap. Woodward keeps it up the middle. He's fighting for the marker. Looks like he's just short. Woodward, keeper. Brought down by Cooper Bauer. Cooper Bauer. Danny Main, the tackle. So it's less than a yard on the gain. Also. Officially, let's call it no gain. It's third down and a long yard for Mifflin inside the Bobcats' 10. Crowd trying to get the defense going. There's a handoff up the middle, number four. Looks like he's got the first. They haven't made a signal yet. I thought he had it with the yardage. Gary and you might have a measurement here. And the measurement, and Mifflin got the first down. They had it by plenty. Yeah, from a naked eye, I thought they had it, and the chains confirmed that. And it's first and goal for the punchers of the Bobcats 8. So first down and goal officially at the seven yard line. Woodward to pass, throws in the flat to number two and he rolls over to the three. That was Henry Olinger the tackle. And he's now second and goal from about the Grand Dunes three and a half, four yards. Come on, Second down and goal at the three. He's end up to number four. He stood up, still trying to push, and he is tackled shy of the goal line. And a flag flies. Looks like it's just a sideline warning. So a sideline warning on Mifflin. Oh no, they call it pushing the runner. Yeah, you can't so, Yeah, you can't run, run, yeah. The tush push like the Eagles do in <laughs> in high school football. That's what yeah, because that's usually the signal for sideline warning. And a timeout's called by Mifflin. I'm a, I'm a teacher by heart. No. So that's an illegal push called on Mifflin. 
Looks like the same signal as a sideline warning. That's another high school. <laughs> seen two big high school rule discrepancies compared to college in the NFL. First, the penalties are all yardage, whether it's personal fouls or well, even if it's a personal foul. And secondly, you're not allowed to push guys from behind in high school like you are in college or especially nowadays the NFL. So that's five yards. It's second down and goal. Punchers at the Bobcats, eight. Second down and goal, Mifflin at the Bobcats eight. It's a quarterback draw, Woodward. Woodward running right, tries to slip a tackle. Does push a bit, but he doesn't get up to the five. Gary Chapin waltz the tackle. Braddock Lusher, and that's no gain. So it's third and goal at the eight. Five minutes left in the second quarter. Cats leading 7-0, the only score of a 57-yard strike, Clifford to Nugent. Two in the backfield, Woodward in the shotgun. Third and eight. And it's a reverse. He gets past the first man, still going inside the five, but he's tackled short. It's fourth and goal. Ben Matney, Aiden Dowdy to tackle. So it's fourth and goal at the five yard line for Mifflin. Under four minutes left in the second quarter. Here we go. It's Harlem Walker, one of the men in the backfield for Mifflin. Crowd waking up for the first time tonight. Woodward, low snap, picks it up. He's in trouble and escapes. Throws it forward, incomplete. Incomplete. Cats take over on downs. So that was a desperation heave. He couldn't get much on it. There are three Bobcats swarming Michael Woodward there. And the Cats will take over first and 10 at their own five. Ladies and gentlemen, down there from the stage, Mike Rowland is walking around waving some tickets. I think it's going to be a big jackpot tonight. Get in on that jackpot. That's a wild cat on the snap to... Henry Olinger, he's tackled at two. He's brought down to the end zone. Ford Progress will get him up to the two. And that's a loss. So that brings him down to the two. And it's second down and 13. Cats at their own two. Cats, forget about getting a first down here. They just want to get out of the shadow of their own goal post. First half moving at a much brisker pace than the game against Lucasville Valley last week. <laughs> and a timeout called by the Bobcats. All kinds of goodies on both sides of the field. 
So Grandview, if they win this game, according to Drew Pasteur and his fantastic 50, which is makes computer predictions for football games and playoff seedings in OHSAA, Grandview has an 84% chance of hosting a home playoff game next week if they win tonight. Two teams ahead of the Bobcats. Grandview's ninth in Region 23. Top eight teams get a home game. Grandview is already in the playoffs. For the eighth seed, East Knox plays 9-0 Danville tonight. And seventh seeded Nelsonville plays Division Three Athens, who has a winning 5-4 record. The Cats, they get the goal line stand, but they're in the shadow of their own goal post here. Second and 13 at their own two. And the Cats run the hard count, and it works. I believe that's the third time the punchers have jumped tonight on D. And that's, that's a good call by the Bobcats. Cats get out of the shadow of their own post. So it's five yards and makes it second down and eight at their own seven. And here's Olinger trying to run right. Does get more than I thought he would. Looked like he was going to be brought down for a loss there, but he's able to push up to the 10. And it's third and five. So that was Juan, Cruz, Gordillo, and Tamar Preston. Now 35 for your Bobcats from their own 10 yard So Mifflin has one timeout. We're two minutes left here in the second quarter. Here's Olinger. Olinger cuts it back, gets the first down. Here he goes. One man to beat. He's to the 40. He's to the 50. Takes a tackle. He's gone. Touchdown, Grandview. 90 yards for Henry Olinger. Thirteen nothing Grandview. The two big plays for the Bobcats. First, the pass to Nugent, fifty-seven yards in the first quarter, and the ninety-yard touchdown scamper by Henry Olinger. Yeah, that's mine. That's mine. I don't know if there's anything left. Ryan Livingston Sanders, his kick is good. 14-0 Grandview with 1.42 remaining in the second quarter. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Bobcats football on YouTube. One forty-two left in the second quarter. Two big plays in this game. Have the Cats up 14-0. First was a 57-yard touchdown pass by Jack Clifford to, Hent to Owen Nugent in the first quarter. And the last one, last play, was a 90-yard touchdown run by Henry Olinger. As there's a line drive kick towards the near side. 
Here's Woodward. Tackled shy of the 35. So Steve Chortis, one of the seniors tonight, with the tackle. So with that, Brandon First and ten punches of their own 34. It's quarterback keeper by Woodward. Cats have it well read. He doesn't get much. And that was Ben Matney to tackle. Ryan Tucker, a senior, was there as well. So Grandview will get the ball to start the second half. Mifflin doesn't seem to have any real sense of urgency here. They have one timeout in 55 seconds, and they don't get the ball back to start the third quarter. Here's a handoff up the middle, number four. Braddock Lusher stands him up at the 43. And a timeout called by Grandview. Lusher brings down number four on the It's now third and six for the So now it's third and seven. Punchers at their own thirty seven. 14-0 Bobcats lead, 44 seconds left in the first half. Woodward, play action, looking, starts up the middle, escapes, stops, reverses his course, loses the football, he dies back on it at his own 29. Cats call their last timeout. For the punches. Fourth and fifteen from the twenty-nine yard Thanks, John. Grandy wants might go after this punt and hope for a big play. There are 29 seconds, 32 seconds remaining in the first half. And Grandview will get the ball back to start the third quarter as they won the toss and deferred before the game tonight. Nugent back to receive. Michael Woodward to punt it away for the punchers. 
It's a bell high snap. Cats almost got there. That was Lusher almost got him. That's a dang good punt there by Woodward as this is down at the one yard line. What is the yardage on that? That's a that's a set that's a seventy yard punt. That is a 70-yard punt by Michael Woodward. The Bobcats almost got there. It was Braddock Lush rolls. Cats just have to sneak it and then. Mifflin has one timeout. Actually, the ball is spotted close to the two, so the Cats have a little bit more breathing room here. Not much, but a little more. They put Clifford under center. And it's a quarterback sneak. Clifford gets enough room. Gets a couple yards there, actually. Almost five. And Midland will let the clock run out as we will reach the end of the first half. 14-0 Bobcats. A Nugent 57-yard touchdown reception from Clifford. And a 90-yard touchdown run by Henry Olinger. With all the scoring in tonight's game. It's 14-0 Bobcats as we've reached the end of the first half of this game between Grandview and Mifflin. You're watching Bobcats football on YouTube. I'll be back for the second half.
Ladies and gentlemen, you all step in. Make that woman out to you. Dan Sophia. It's the pride of the mountain. The band senior class this week put together a set list featuring, featuring their favorite tunes from the shows during the last three years. And then the performance gets launched with Carlos Santana's Evil Wave, the Latin rockers who recorded a month before its public debut at the August 1969 Rock Fest outside Woodstock, New York. Santana released Evil Wave as a single in the early 1970s when it climbed to number nine on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. You got me sneaking and peeking and running you down.
the Gap Band in 1982. Rockin' is the song to number two on the Billboard R&B chart, and number 31 on the Hot 100. You turn me loose, then you turn me wrong.
Yeah. Well, how long has it been, really? 30 years? 30, 40 years? Well, I think the point is about right. Yeah. All right, sir. Yeah. United. Here. That's right. Yeah. 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 I coached in baseball with this. And I said that I remember that. What point is your I just couldn't do it like this. We got a little He's not, he's playing. Back here for the start of the second half. Cats on top 14 to nothing over Mifflin. Grandview, according to the projections, has an 84% chance to host a home playoff game if they are able to hang on tonight. And Grandview gets the ball back to start the second half. Michael Woodward. Sends a low line drive kick. Here's Nugent to the 30, 35, 40. Lowers the shoulder, and he gets up to the 47. It was the kicker, Michael Woodward, who made the tackle. The Mario Harrell was there as well. First to ten cats, their own forty six. And Mifflin jumped again. I think it's their fourth offsides. Of, I haven't been counting, but it's at least four of them. First and five at the 49. Here's Olinger. Olinger looking for the corner. Doesn't have enough room there. And he stood up at the 48. That's Tamar Preston, the tackle. Or King Hills there as well. 
So that's one yard, and it's second down and four. Cats at the Mifflin 48. Second and four. Cats at the puncher's 48. Olinger. Tackle for a loss behind the line of scrimmage. Michael Woodward, the tackle. It's now third and four for your Bobcats. So that's a loss of eh, about a half yard. Still third and third down and a long four. There's some movement. Both teams pouring in each direction, and, and this time it's against the Bobcats. The Cats moved, causing Mifflin to react. That time if the foul is on Grandy. I think Grandy was going for the hard count there, but a couple of their guys moved. They shouldn't have. And now it's third down and nine for the Bobcats, their own 47. Here's Olinger. Olinger running left, so it's a tackle. Gets the first down inside the 40, and he's tackled at the 36. So it's first to 10 cats at the Mifflin 36. Under 10 minutes left in the third quarter, Grandview on top 14 nothing. Here's Olinger up the middle. Just shy of the first down. So second down and a long yard for the Bobcats. Lusher in the backfield with Clifford. It's Lusher. Tries to shake a couple tackles. Looks like he's just shy of the first. Tamar Preston with the tackle. Yeah, about a yard shy of the first down. Yeah, it's third and one. No doubt, four down territory here for the Bobcats. Now, third and one for your Bobcats. From the 15th, 16th, and half yard line at the 7 yard line of the country. Here's Saycash. Saycash gets the first down. I haven't seen him much in the backfield tonight, but. He does get the first down. So that was Normari Normario Harrell with the tackle. So the Cats have it first to 10 at the Mifflin 22. And there's a throw in the middle, deflected, and it is nearly intercepted. Well, almost the big break the punchers needed. 
They're down 14 nothing. Cats are on the edge of the red zone. Things looking pretty bleak, and they almost got an interception there, but it falls down to the turf. And it's second and 10 Bobcats at the Mifflin 22. 7.36 left in the third quarter. Two in the backfield for Grandview, two receivers to the right. Nugent the motion. Here's Saycash. Saycash to the 16. So Saycash, I think these are both the carries he's gotten in the game coming on this drive. That's a six yard carry. It's third down and four. Student section singing happy birthday to somebody. Third and four, and the counter, that doesn't work out. That's a tackle for a loss. Balls, it's a fumble. I think the officials are ruling him down. Punchers are saying that they have the ball. They probably came up with it, but they ruled him down. Uh-oh, hang on here. They might be changing their minds. Oh, no, I don't think they're changing their minds. It's, ooh, boy, that's, that's Henry Olinger. Looks like he's the man down for the Bobcats. And it's fourth down. From the 19 and a half yard line. Let's go, Bets! Let's give you some updates from other sports. Blue Jackets on top. The Flames won nothing with eight minutes left in the second period. Sean Corrali, the lone goal scorer in that one. With the Jackets, the way they look at the first three games, it's like which Jackets team is going to show up? Well, jackets are on top, one nothing. Actually, three forty-six to go in the second period. In Major League Baseball, the Houston Astros won a stunner in Game 5 in Arlington. Texas was up 4-2 to two in the top of the ninth, but Houston got a go-ahead three-run homer by Jose Altuve in the top of the ninth inning. And the Astros stunned the Rangers in Game 5. Phillies and Diamondbacks are underway in Game 4. Cass kicking a field goal here. Ryan Livingston Sanders, a 36-yard attempt. Snap back, hold down. The kick is up towards the upright, and he got it! Ryan Livingston Sanders, a 36-yard field goal. That would have been good for 46. And the Cats lead 17-0. I mean, did, did Benton Bear ever kick one that long back in the day? I mean, that was eight years ago. <laughs> the Cats lead 17 nothing. That's huge because the Cats lead by three scores. And in the National League Championship Series, game four with the Phillies leading the series two games to one. It's nothing, nothing. Phillies and Diamondbacks, bottom of the second inning. And Houston, one win away from going back to the World Series. That game six is Sunday night at 8 p.m. in Houston. And Benton Bear, he was the last kicker 
who could make kicks from that sort of distance. I don't know what the longest one he made was that year. Now he just said, balls loose, and Nugent's got it. The Cats recover the ball off the Pooch kick. And Grady will take it at the Mifflin 35. First to ten cats in the 35. Clifford looking long. He's looking for Sanzo. He's caught it. Touchdown, Grandview. Jack Clifford, a 35-yard pass to Will Sanzo, who caught it in coverage near the pylon. And the Cats lead 23 to nothing. And the kick is a low kick. It is good. Well, I don't think that kick would have been good from 46, but it's good for the extra point. The Cats lead 24 to nothing with 6-10 left in the third quarter. And this broadcast is brought to you by our friends at Nikki Evans with Coldwell Banker, Nationwide Children's Hospital, the Nine. Duncan. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you we'd like to thank our athletic partners, Nikki Evans and Real, Lion Cubs Cookies, Nationwide Children's Hospital, Jolly Fine Brewing Company, and Duncan for their support of Brand New Athletics. Lions Cubs. How about the Lions stand? <laughs> okay, now I got. Now you said that. I can't say this one more time. That's what I'm gonna say, Chuck. Thank you. So I am not announcing this one more time. Oh yeah, hey. Here we go again. What are we doing? So it's the same pooch kick. Mifflin's ready for it this time. She cuts the corner and gets up past the 40. Mario Harrell on the reception brings up about 12 yards. Mario Harrell with the return. Punchers 44 yard line. Let's go, D! Let's go, White! Go, Gary! Go, Cross! Go, Frederick! And number five, Will Sanzo on that tonight. Let's go, Gary! So Mifflin desperately needs a touchdown on this drive. Has decent field position starting first to 10 at their own 43. There's a handoff up the middle and he's tackled for a loss behind the line. That was Cooper Bauer, the tackle. It's a one-yard loss at second and 11. Punchers at their own 42. Two receivers to the right, one wide to the left. Two back formation, two back pistol formation for Mifflin. Here goes Woodward. Woodward up to the 46. So that's Gary Chaffer, Waltz, and Braddock Blusher making the play for Grandview. 
And it's third down and seven. Let's go, D! Let's go, D! 4.46 remaining in the third quarter. 24-0, Bobcats leading. And it's a low snap, Woodward steps up, runs up the middle, has the first, breaks a tackle 40, and he's down at the 35. Woodward on the carry, picks up about 20, and a first down, brought down by, tripped up by number seven, Jobert, and brought down by Kyle Kukur. With that, the punchers have first down from the grand view 35 yard line. First to 10, punchers at the Bobcats, 35. Two back pistol formation. Here's number four, running right, and he is dragged to the ground by Danny Main there. Saycash is there as well. So it's second down and six. I think it's closer to six, John. Ah, <laughs> uh, you could you could go either way. It's at the thirty and a half yard, y'all. At first glance, I thought it was a little close to the thirty-one. It's at the thirty and a half. I'll give you that. All right, second down and five and a half at the thirty and a half yard line. Okay, that's our that's our brokered settlement between me and and John Iono. It's brokered by Chuck Amicon. Because that's definitely shy of the first down. I don't think there'll be any dispute there. Now it's third down and three. Here's Woodward. Woodward looking for the corner. Leaps has the first down. He's inside the 25. Woodward on the keeper picks up the first down. Brought down by Jim Saycash and Ryan Tucker. First to 10 at the 24. Over two minutes to go in the third quarter. Here's number four, and he is stood up behind the line. That was Daniel Main, the tackle. That's a two yard loss, and it's second and 12. Take over. With 109 left in the third quarter. Some guys, they'll just automatically move the first time. Let's go, guys! Let's go, guys! Let's go, 
As there's a pitch to the near side. Here's Aiden Dowdy. Dowdy. Good run on that pitch. This is Ben Richardson, the freshman offensive lineman. Camp a little gimpy there. Looks like he's fine. So that's eight yards, and it's second and two. Very light rain falling here at Bobcat Stadium. Not enough to have any effect. As Lusher slips in the backfield, he's down to 20. Well, maybe the rain would have had some effect there. He got bitten by the turf monster there. And the Cats, 10 seconds left in the third quarter. And they'll take this into the final 12. Cats tack on another 10 points. They lead 24-0. We go to the fourth quarter. You're watching Bobcat Football on YouTube. Start of the fourth quarter. Cats on top, 24 nothing. They start this frame third and five at their own 20. Four receivers split out wide to the left. Lusher in the backfield with Clifford. Clifford, a swing pass to Nugent. He drops it incomplete. Clifford's pass to Nugent falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down and five from the brand new 20-yard line. And on the punt is Ryan Livingston Sanders back to receive for the... So Ryan Livingston Sanders to punt. And Dante Lanier to receive for the punchers. That's a short high kick. It bounces at the 37 and goes out of bounds. So the punchers will have very so good field position here. Livingston Sanders' kick goes out at the 37 yard line of the Bobcats where the punchers will take over. Stop, Brody! So it's first to 10, Mifflin at Grandview's 37, 24-0, the Cats lead, 11.49 to go in regulation. Go white. Woodward, screen pass is tipped and incomplete. That was Ryan Tucker who disrupted that, and second and 10. Let's go, Bobcat! 
number four. He's tackled shy of the 20. First to ten, Mifflin, the Bobcats, 21. It's a low snap. Woodward keeps it up the middle. He's inside the ten, still going. He's down at the six. It's Owen Nugent, the tackle. So Mifflin, this is their second time inside the ten yard line. And up to number four, he slips a tackle, fighting for the goal line. He's just short. Four on the carry. Let's go, Gary! Five on it. Let's go, Gary! The second go, Gary. and goal from the brand new one yard line. You got Danny! Let's go, Danny! And here's a handoff up the middle. The quarterback Woodward trying to get in. He does not. He stops short. That was Braddock Lush with a tackle. Say Cash also credited with the tackle. So it's third down and goal at the one. There's a handoff to the tailback. He's fighting for the goal line. He's short again. The Cats holding up very strong right at the goal line. And now it'll be fourth and goal at the half yard line for the punchers. And a timeout called. We'll take a quick timeout ourselves here with 9.03 left in the fourth quarter. Big fourth and goal at the one coming up with the Bobcats leading 24 to nothing. Stay tuned. Here we go, 24-0 Bobcats, 9.03 left in the fourth. Fourth down and goal, Mifflin at the Grandview one. Two in the backfield. Woodward takes a snap, handoff up the middle. He stopped initially. He's not going to get in. A goal line stand for the Bobcats. So they really made a second effort, so the Cats will get at their own seven, so that's plenty of breathing room for Grandview. Yeah. 
They got that to start from their own two-yard line. First and ten. Oh, now, now they spot it back at the two. And a timeout called by Mifflin. They had trouble getting the right personnel on and off the field. No sign of Henry Olinger anywhere. He's not he's not on the field, not on the sideline. So first to goal, cat, first to ten, catch the two. It's a quarterback sneak. Cats get enough space there. So that's a three-yard gain, and it's second down and seven. Now check that. They do spot at the four. It's second down and eight at the four. I say four and a half. Here we go. And now there's another yardage dispute in the booth here between me and John. Let's see if let's see if let's see if let's see if, let's see if uh, Chuck and Jim can broker a deal between me and John here. So here's Lusher. Lusher pass the ten. Has the first down. Still going twenty. And he is down at the 30. That was Michael Frie with the tackle. And that's a 26-yard game. That's what I'm calling it. It's first to 10 cats at the 30. Chuck, I don't think you'll need to... I don't think you'll need to mediate any negotiations between me and John here as to what the spot is. Yeah. They took the easy way out. They put it right on put the Put it right on the 30. Go, Dave! Has Cats called timeout. Good thing they did because the snap went over Jack Clifford's head there. So last week, I don't think the third quarter was over until like, what, 9, 9.30 at the end of the third quarter. And the clock, it's 8, it's 8.59 here, and there's 7.28 left in the fourth quarter. We can't keep that ball on the ground. And we didn't leave here until 9. The game went over until 10.02. I think it was all time. Yeah, it was all time. <laughs> yeah, Chuck Amicon, he was the reason why the games went so, no. Chuck didn't get his nap. Here's Clifford rolling to his left, dumps it to Nugent. Nugent, out past the 30, tiptoes the sideline. 
has the first, and he's out of bounds at the 43. First to ten, cats their own 43. And a flag flies. Offside on Mifflin. Offside, Mifflin. That'll be a five yard penalty. First and five for the 40 Rockets. From their own 48 Rockets. Here's Braddock Lusher. Lusher stopped at the line of scrimmage. It was Tamar Preston on the tackle. So it's no gain. And second down at five, under seven minutes. Clock ticking. Cats will eat up as much clock as they want. They score a touchdown here. It'll be a running clock. Unless Mifflin is able to get on the board. As cats are rushing, James Gusty. Oh, they weren't rushing him off the field. They just wanted him on the other side of the field. Here's Nugent. Nugent has the first. And he's flung down at the 43. That's Julian Gilmore, the tackle, but not before Nugent's able to find space and get the first. First and ten, Bobcats at the puncher's 44. Clifford, a screen pass to Lusher. Lusher inside the 40, cuts right, first down 30. He's to the 25, he's chopped down right there. Michael Woodward, the tackle, so that's a 20 yard gain. And it's first to 10 cats at the puncher's 24. Here's Aiden Dowdy. Dowdy lost the football and Mifflin has it. Here's number four running. This tackle just shy of the first down. Gary Chapin Waltz the tackle. 
So now it's second down and two punchers their own 26. Under five minutes left in regulation. Cats comfortably leading 24 to nothing. Here's a handoff to the unidentified number two. He does get the first down. Will Sanzo making the tackle, but punchers are able to get the first down. It's been a damp, chilly night. Temperature in the low 50s. It's been a light rainfall for most of the game. Fans all bundled up. Some people with ponchos out. Woodward to pass. Fires far side, incomplete. It went over the head of Terry Bowers, the intended receiver. And it's second down and 10. Got it. Here's Woodward, it's a quarterback keeper. He's in trouble, finds some room, and he gets up past the 40. There's a handoff to the tailback, and he's tackled. He's like just shy. Nope, they give him the first down. Danny made the tackle. So that's two yards, and it's first and 10 Mifflin at their own 43. Once again, fans in Grandview and all over the state will be furiously refreshing joeitel.com every 30 seconds tonight to see Number one, whether team's in the playoffs, or two, where they will be playing. Woodward pumps, backs up, rolls to his left, now reverses his course, a flag flies, he's looking down the field, throws it, it is incomplete. He threw it towards Dante Lanier, who was covered there by Owen Nugent. And it's a hold. It's block in the back called on Mifflin. So first down and 20. And that is, is that intercepted? That's picked off. <laughs> that was a little chest pass that got picked off. Cooper Power. I That was a delayed reaction with the crowd because... <laughs> The crowd didn't react at all after that play, but then they saw Cooper Bauer with the football, and they're like, hey! Let's 
Wildcats, 2.22 left in the fourth quarter. This might be the final drive of the game. She in there? there. Charlotte Tucker, senior, listed as a wide receiver and defensive back. She has made it into the game. Fans cheer her entrance onto the field. Charlotte Tucker moves as a wide receiver split out to the right. Gavin Miller's entered the game for Grandview. And it's a handoff. Here's Ben Matney down to the 21. So under two minutes left in the fourth quarter, first and ten cats at the 21. And there's a low pass, it's incomplete. We're looking for Charlotte Tucker. She gets a cheer from the Bobcat fans. Well, might not be the last time we're here. According to the projections, Cats have an 84% chance of hosting a home playoff game next week if they win tonight. Which Cats comfortably leading 24 nothing with a minute 47 to go as the rain starts to pick up as Clifford takes a knee as Grandview can kneel it out the rest of the way if assuming Mifflin does not take the last time out which being down 24 nothing Likely aren't thinking of doing that. Now they put Clifford in the shotgun here. Actually, they cannot. It, it, it is third down, my mistake. They cannot kneel it out the rest of the way. So Clifford takes a knee, and that makes it fourth and long. So under a minute left in regulation play. This is the first 
Reminder, tomorrow you're in the <laughs> oh, shattered the press box here. Most of all, most home games here have been down to the wire, some real cliffhangers, but not so tonight. It's very, very wet, comfortable 24 nothing win for the Bobcats. Rather quiet crowd tonight. It was pretty. Crowd, they were really getting on the officials last week. They were screaming. Much different atmosphere tonight. So they start the clock. Four seconds left. And that does it. So the Bobcats are 7 and 3. They're in the playoffs. And now we wait. Check joeitel.com. Keep refreshing, refreshing, and refreshing. See the Bobcats get the help they needed to host a home playoff game. Well, wherever it is, John Iono should be here next week to work the playoff game wherever it is, whoever it is against. Well, I want to. This is likely my final time on the air this year. I'll be calling some games elsewhere the next couple weeks, but I want to thank you all. I want to thank all of you who had tuned in. I want to thank Brad Bertani, John Iono, the whole crew in the press box here. As that's a wrap from Grandview tonight, once again the final score, Grandview 24, Mifflin nothing, Grandview is in the playoffs, who they play and where they will play next week is still left to be determined, but Grandview finishes the regular season 7-3, and and they are in the OHSAA state playoffs. Well that's about all I have for Brad Bertani, the athletic director, and my partner John Iono, I'm Murphy Horning, good night. Where are you heading, Murph? We're working yeah. on New Albany game next week. Oh, yeah. On Friday? Yeah. Oh. yeah. I know. We're cursed this year. We're cursed this year. Is this a good time? Who are you doing? Yeah. Uh, the 985. 3349. 985. The guy who put me on the chill coffee is cursed. Yeah. So. Are you, what are you doing? Radio? Or? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, online radio. What's well, the next one? No, I think it's that. I've been checking the law to see if they can play. Yeah. Don't play. Although they're, they're D1, so they're, they're, they're pretty. I'm sure that I'm, you know, all the D1 schools that degrees are probably close to each other, so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, huh? Damn. Right. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I'll see you. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bye, guys. Hey. Yeah. I'll be listening. Well, all right. Thanks, Chuck. Well, Murph, maybe let's see where the second game is. Maybe we can see Brad will let us do a road trip. and Hopefully, yeah. Because I think when we have over a 1,000 subscribers, which we do. Oh, there's like, like over 200. Oh, about 200. Like I, like I know I heard from a few people. No, they were 500 and some views. When I oh, okay. total, total views. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. No, I mean, well, when we went on, there were almost 200 people yeah, that, watching. That, that's, that's, that's pretty good rating for it. I mean, that's a lot. And Brad I'm, said uh, that if they don't, he said we should test it because I think if we could do just an iPad. I, 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 I wore games on an iPad. That, like when I was at Capital once, like we used to call a game on an iPad. And I used a couple of earbuds and the earbud mic in my, my mic. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure something out as we go on the road. Yeah, I'd yeah. be up for a road game. Yeah. You should come up and announce soccer. Yeah, maybe the later playoff games, I might be able to. All right. Something. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Murph. We'll yeah. see you later, buddy. Mike Good luck. Tiana's, yeah, Mike T had a soccer game down the road. All right. Yeah. There's always a spot up here for you. Oh, no, no, thank you. Jim's going to be about ready to kick me out anyway. <laughs> Well, you guys are already tired of each other. Oh, no. Another day. Yeah. Yeah.